The following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Hello and welcome to Gen XYZ. We are here back again this week, but today we have two very interesting guests with us today. And I believe that they will be able to share their experiences with us and some useful tips for the talented people out there in order to use their talents in a very useful way. And I believe, you know, Sri Lanka is a really small country, but I have found that there are so many people out there who are immensely talented, like especially the youth. But sadly, there are barriers that they are blocking, that they can't use these talents to the maximum. One of the barriers that I would say is that they are not aware of the platforms or avenues that are available for them to take or probably their parents might be restricting them or the society and they have this uh, at the back of their head thinking like what will society think or probably they might be even having a financial issue. So with that I would like to introduce the all new international superstar Johani De Silva and also Dilanjan Seniviratna who is the director of Peta Effect. And we don't need to give an introduction to Yohani because everyone knows when we say Yohani. And thank you both of you all for joining me on the show. Thank and I so know much. that you all have a really tight schedule, but still <laughs> you all made time for this. And I'm really grateful for that. And I know that you've been releasing a new song recently and mm -hmm. you all been working on that as well. But before that, your success. You've been skyrocketing throughout the past few months. You've gone on an Indian tour. You've signed contracts with Sonu. You've uh, <laughs> gone on TV programs with Salman Khan and Ranveer Singh. And everything just happened within a few months. Yeah. And what do you feel about that? I think it's still like a dream for us because it happened really fast. Yeah, like you said, within a couple of months. So we're still kind of taking it in and it's been a little bit overwhelming <laughs> but yeah it's yeah. been it's been great. It's been crazy. <laughs> like both of y'all, I've seen on media also, people are talking about it. Both of y'all are working together, y'all have been seen on screen together. How would y'all describe your relationship with each other? Is it hard for y'all to work with each other? <laughs> yeah, um, I mean we, we've been working for about seven years now. I was a photographer earlier with him, I mean, in his team. And yeah, it's kind of hard <laughs> to work together <laughs> sometimes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I love to say that. <laughs> I'm not the easiest to work with. Um, I, yeah, and my I, team uh, would. <laughs> yeah. But you all were able to make this huge, yeah. I think that glorious I, that, There's so many arguments that goes on to a production, yeah. <laughs> like when we work together. But I think end of the day, it makes sense. <laughs> what do you all think about teamwork? Do you think that you need a team as an artist? Of you course. need a background yeah. team in yeah. order to be successful and be of seen course. out there? Yeah, definitely. So we have two teams uh, that's working with us. One is Tivra. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, uh, it's a creative company. It's a creative company. Mm -hmm. And Peta Effect, which is the music yeah. side of thing, music yeah. company. <laughs> so Dilanjan, how did you meet Johani and how did you think that, oh my God, she's a very talented individual? I met her sometimes back uh, before she was in music. I, think. I was not even in this industry. I was in uh, I was a banker at the time. Yeah. We worked in the same building. Um, so we were just a bunch of people running around with cameras trying to, you know, enjoy what we do. And then she's at the time she was, you know, with a guitar playing some music and all that. We said one day why don't we put it online, you know? We have the cameras, we have the equipment, we'll shoot it and put it online and that was the start. Yeah, that was my first ever YouTube yeah. video. So can we say that Dilanjan was the triggering point for you to start this whole thing? I think so, I would say that. I mean, technically yes, I wouldn't have, I think, start, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's very, so the thing... Because I, I didn't have a YouTube account as well those days. <laughs> yeah. So how did you notice that she yeah, had that's this a, that's potential? The first time we had this comment, okay, that, that <laughs> question, I'm also like, what do I say? 
how did you identify that she had this talent within her and you thought that she could be a superstar in future? I didn't know that. I mean, and today okay. when we sign somebody, we don't know what is going to happen. I have, so the thing is, uh, in 2018 is when we started Petai Effect with the vision to give young artists a platform. And I have auditioned close to 1,000 people by now. Um, and I have seen beautiful voices, but we never know. Like they, they didn't stay the course. Only Johanny did. So like one of the few is Johanny. So I think we never know when, when we see somebody, whether they're talented or not. Uh, only the time shall reveal that, I suppose. All right. So now coming back to your Indian tour mm -hmm. and the little, little events that be, have been happening recently, was anything planned out? Did you have it scheduled? Uh, <laughs> before before going to India? Yes. Uh, so, we the, the reason we went to India was to do the two shows, one in Delhi and one in Hyderabad. But Mumbai was completely, it was supposed to be a holiday, which <laughs> never happened. <laughs> and, yep. Yeah, <laughs> the, it wasn't a holiday, it was just work from, we did so much of work, we did few recordings, we met a lot of people, we went to Big Boss and Big Picture yes, as well, of so there was a lot of work that went into that time in Mumbai. <laughs> the song, Manike Mage Hite, did you ever think that it will become a hit? No. Or did you just select it random and you thought, okay, this is a good song? I mean, I it was just the TikTok at first. Really? Yeah. So, we never thought it would go um, beyond Sri Lanka. What was your response when you uh, heard that, okay, this song is going viral? How did you all react to it? Did you all know? Did you all have a plan? Okay, next we are going to do this? We didn't have a plan. <laughs> I think uh, uh, maybe you did. I didn't have a plan. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dilajan, what was your plan if you did have one? So, we were, so the, the, in, 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 in managing any, any artist, we have, we've set visions for people, our people, right? So, what we want to achieve is along these lines. Uh, like, for example, we want a record to hit platinum. We want a record to uh, be recognized at that level. So we are always thinking of creative ways of, you know, and studying, you know, how did this particular artist did it? What are the strategies involved in this? And so that my team regularly monitors these things. And when we saw this channel analytics and how this, how the audience kept changing. Because it shows, you know, number one in Kerala at some point, number one is another city at one point. So we realize, you know, this is this is something. There is something happening here. So how do we make this a stepping stone? Was definitely planned, and uh, to add to this uh, whole Mumbai and uh, big that being a holiday. If I had told Johanny, you know, we are going to work, she would have refused. <laughs> I'm just hearing this. <laughs> so we knew we. I knew. Uh, I, I, I by then I had already connected with Sonu Lakwani, who is the agent for her, and I had told Sonu, Sonu, I need these 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 meetings happening. How do you make it happen? Is I don't know, right? And uh, so Sonu is is a well well known established guy. So he confirmed me T series, even before we go there. He confirmed, you know, um, it's on. I have five, uh, half an hour with T-Series for you. Well, let's, let's see what happens, right? The beauty of her is that when you give her the opportunity, when we got half an hour, it was a three hour meeting later. Because she was that interesting for them. And she showed her work, she showed her upcoming music video. So I think it all fell in place. Yeah. Right? The all hard work she had done, in place and we were we there. had done <laughs> <laughs> this interest you had for music when did you start identifying it because i heard that you did accounting yeah. and shipping logistics yeah. you studied and you never thought of even coming to this Not really. events or artist side of the yeah. platform so how did you identify okay this is my thing i'm gonna do this uh, i would say in 2019 i had a big decision to make which was uh, either do accounting and stay in Australia yeah. and go to the whole corporate life thing or to stop everything, I mean finish my masters uh, and just come back to Sri Lanka and start music from bottom and I chose that. <laughs> I think it was kind of like a, a adventure slash 
challenge for me. So I kind of like those things. <laughs> so this music, your yeah, uh, talent for music, how did you identify it? Like, okay, yes, really, I can sing. I don't think I've still done that. <laughs> Come on, but you're an international star now. Of course, I, you should admit well, that. What I think is like you need to keep learning things, and of course, you know, I, I don't think I'll ever get to the point where I'm like, oh, this is my talent. I don't think I know that. <laughs> I don't know how to answer that. Maybe. It's, I don't believe in talent. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's that's completely would different. You, would you like to add on to that statement? You don't believe in talent. As in the. the Talent in the sense a particular skill is needed, like a, it, it is a critical success factor. Being able to pitch and sing mm -hmm. is definitely a critical success factor. But I have met uh, in my journey as a as an AR, I have met, like I said, I've auditioned a lot of people and I've seen great talent, but it never translates to commercial value. Right? Mm -hmm. So how do you bring about something you may have picked up as a child? or may have picked up in your adulthood uh, skill, how do you commercialize that is a lot of hard work, a lot of processes, a lot of discipline. Um, so that's why I think uh, the, the, the answer to maybe your question with Johan is that she identified at an early age that she has a skill to sing and play a guitar, but she had the discipline to improve that and learn on top of it. And you know, every day be humble and learn something new, learn from someone else, pick it up, jam it, fusion it, do something new, that takes a lot of courage and discipline. So I think I believe in that discipline a lot more than being a talented person. Exactly. So now finding that courage for you to start something new, how did you get that? Because now here in Sri Lanka, I've seen a lot of people who <laughs> can sing, who can dance. But later on when I asked them, I asked them, why, why don't you do something? Why yeah. don't you release something, a song or a cover or anything? So yeah. No, this is not my side. My parents are forcing <laughs> me to become a doctor, a lawyer. Yeah. It, it's a, a norm that Sri Lanka has just created in this generation, our parents' Even generation. Even for us, it's like, it was like that. No. How so, did you overcome that challenge? I'm not, uh, it, it wasn't easy for me as well because I, 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 would, I was completely, um, my mind was completely in a corporate um, job and going along that side. But I think after a certain point, uh, it wasn't a decision that I took in one day. Yes. I kind of took up maybe like one year. <laughs> First, because initially, you wanted to become an accountant yeah. or the corporate world. Mm -hmm. What made you have that mindset? Uh, I don't know. Ooh. I just went around Australia for like six months and oh, met were people. You? Right. So <laughs> and you I was just like, exposed. you know what, I'm going to do that. <laughs> Right, so you just were exposed to that sort of yes. area only. Yeah, and okay. that really inspired me because you can do what you want, and it's it's a it's a twenty four hour thing. But exactly. <laughs> so, what is the challenge you faced, like breaking away from that norm? Would you one say second, that? One second. Hold on. Uh, what was the question? Uh. <laughs> So, what was the challenge you faced? Like, were there any bar barriers that you faced with your parents or society? Weren't you afraid to take this one step further? Uh, no, I wasn't afraid, but I, I knew it was a risk. Exactly. Uh, but I also knew I'm somehow going to do it. Mm -hmm. So, like, I, I don't know how long it's going to take, but then I knew I'm somehow going to do it. So. There were many challenges. So like like you said, we are we are not taught to be artists when we are in school. Yes. <laughs> so that was one thing, I guess. And then of course I got a lot of stuff from society as well. You must have seen on social media. But then I think with my team, uh, they were also helping me. They were also helping me to overcome those taught me how to handle it and move mm -hmm. forward so that really helped me all right okay i think we finished our first segment already <laughs> i didn't even feel the time going but we'll be back again we have to go into a short commercial break we'll be back soon you're watching gen xyz
welcome back to Gen XYZ and we are in discussion with Yohani she doesn't need the description of course and with Dilanjan so I think we touched upon how you got here in the first place in the in our first segment I want to ask you Dilanjan like the song Manike Mage Hite you all did the cover and you all uploaded it on YouTube did you all ever think that this will reach out to over 174 million now absolutely no um because manike wasn't even in a release calendar yeah it wasn't in a schedule yeah. at all i just it was just a fun project she did Random. and then uh, such a coincidence actually and uh, i mean we are quite humbled by the fact that you know after all of that planning this one thing that we never planned <laughs> took her to this <laughs> level so uh it's such Is a any advice that you can give to the youth now if there's anyone else who wants to do something like this or another cover is there any advice or a platform they can use and about this algorithm and about the organic reach now, of course i think you mentioned previously before our program started that yohani had an organic reach could you tell something about that well it's like this now the advice i'll start with that what i'll tell people the the young upcoming musicians or anyone who is trying out a career is that do not overestimate what you can achieve in an year and underestimate what you can achieve in 10 years it's 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 the scale uh, it's this the, the it's that understanding of time is essential because a lot of people would look up to her or anyone for that matter like let's say bns or maria would look up to them and be like hey i want to be like that person and they'll try out for a year like they'll try to get hit song after hit song so many things but what they miss out is yohani has been doing this for 6 years bns has been doing this for 25 years umari has been in the industry for 15 years so if the young girl or boy who comes to the industry thinks hey i want to be like them in an year and then they don't achieve it then they give up that's that's the sad part you stay the course you know any job is like that you know start as a we started as a banking assistant then you slowly build your career right so i started as a studio assistant for a photographer then you slowly build your career, career. yohani didn't start at this level she started with just the cover you know collect money do the next one and uh, when i sign up artists also they don't get to come to the studio immediately you go to live practice rooms you know sit and watch you don't even get to the mic sit and watch what other people do so, you know there is a process to this there is a journey so advice is that um, and according to the gozan bus uh, they have told that okay the lanjan is the brains behind the reach of yohani's music what are your thoughts on that would you agree on that uh <laughs> <laughs> well kind of yeah <laughs> i mean it, it's it's i think it's just teamwork um dilanjan is of course a big part of it uh, but there's a huge team behind as well and also uh everyone has the same goal everyone works toward the same goal so <laughs> I, I, and and i think i don't agree that uh, there is that, that success can be attributed to anyone behind the scenes of course last, like it's it's 99% yohani 1% the management or whoever was behind it but you take one e- one part of the equation now it maybe this doesn't happen <laughs> but uh, i mean all credits should go to yohani because ultimately she has to get on stage and sing yeah. right so when working with the uh, peta effect i've uh, seen that a lot of young people are there a lot of young mindsets and uh, i've never seen a senior there someone with a, a proper experience so what are your thoughts on that and do you think that oh yeah uh, let's have this conversation in 20 years <laughs> thought is i think uh, if you if you don't look as old as you are <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> What are your thoughts on working with you know senior people, or do you think that you all should work with younger people so that they have fresh ideas, or you need more expertise knowledge? It's a bit of both. Bit of both. Bit of both. You need. Um, yeah. And and you need to understand. You have to again have a understanding of this concept of time, because the advice that comes from a senior is from their level. Yes. You no, know, they True. they it general naturally you would assume, you know, the advice is valid across the table. 
uh, youngster would assume the same thing. The, her, their life experience is valid across the table, but it's not the case. I am at a certain point in my life, the senior is at a certain point in their life, the junior is in a certain point. So, you have to understand the concept of time to take what you can do without overestimating yourself. And then, you know, you know, have a have a understanding on how to take the advice, be humble to learn from it and then grow. Yeah. And another thing about your fashion, about your overall looks, was this all your idea or was there an inspiration behind this? Uh, there's no inspiration. I think if you take inspiration would be Pinterest. <laughs> okay. I've said this before. <laughs> Uh, I, I like to just mix and match stuff and just experiment and new trends. So it's kind of like a personal thing. Mm -hmm. Not that I think about it a lot and do. It's just if I like it, I'm going to do it. <laughs> All right. So you know, when it comes to fashion, there are so many critics out there, especially in the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. In yeah. Sri Lanka, you being a Sri Lankan artist also, still there are Sri Lankan people who are still yeah. criticizing. And how did you manage this at, at first? I'm pretty sure you would have got a lot of criticizing yeah. comments or calls or anything. How did you overcome this problem? Well, what I think is uh, people are never going to stop criticizing. Exactly. Yes. But when that first started, I was a little bit like, oh no, what is happening? Should I even do this? I started doubting. But then after a while, I was like, you know what? This is it, what it is. <laughs> and it's never going to stop. You just have to stay focused on what you want to do and your goals and everything else is not going to really matter. Is there anything else that an artist could do to overcome this or stop this? Or you just have to accept it and move on? Maybe have, have bigger goals <laughs> to worry about. <laughs> right. Okay. So this part of criticism does not affect uh, your success at all? I wouldn't say 100%, mm -hmm. maybe like 98%, no. <laughs> okay. And Dilanj and I, uh, I think I asked you prior also, like when you take an artist, they reach this peak level all of a sudden and after sometimes they just vanish. But the question arises is why, uh, is there a strategy where they can just sustain their success throughout? Or is is it a roller coaster? <laughs> depends of depends on how you standardize success number one and standardize peak. Mm -hmm. uh, because what we are seeing with Yohani right now is something we haven't seen in Sri Lanka before, right? But if you compare that to Billie Eilish, Yohani is nobody. So how mm -hmm. you standardize this success and peak really has a question mark. But I think generally, if you look at the scene. What we would, what essentially someone would need is the commercial value for Vihani is at this point is the next number by five, within the next five years. How do I keep it at that level? Would be would might translate yes. to your right, you know as the, the definition for this right? Uh, the answer is no. Mm -hmm. Strategically, it's not something that you can do, uh, but you can try to standardize or rather have a set quality for the work the artist does. Example, she, if she has done a certain genre of music at a really good quality, that has to be carried forward for, for, for the rest of her career. We have seen that with BNS. They've been in the industry for 25 years. The, the last album is as good as their first. So it doesn't matter whether that is the number one hit in the industry or not. If you critically analyze that, it's as good as their earlier work. So how do you manage that is the biggest challenge for an artist. Peaking and you know, success are all these byproducts. <laughs> yeah, fame. Those are byproducts. So what's the next step uh, y'all have in mind? I mean of course recently y'all have released this new single. Yeah. And first of all, what was the response y'all uh, received from it and what were y'all expecting from it? <laughs> well the song is called Moving On. Yes. It's um, uh, he wrote it. He wrote okay. it and directed the video as well. <laughs> That's impressive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and also... Uh, one second, I'm... Okay, do you want to explain? About the moving on? Yeah. Uh, so moving on was something that we cracked uh, 
A year yeah, ago. Yeah, way before many came out with it. But then we couldn't do it because of COVID, then the mm -hmm. situation was a little bit wobbly. But yeah. So Red Bull had a concert in Sri Lanka where she, you guys saw her with a mashup and. Uh, yes, of course. That? So once that came out, we pitched to Red Bull Records. So Red Bull Records is an international label based off of UK and USA. Um, so they pick out artists. Uh, so they, they, them and Yohani so came into. So we partnered up with the Red Bull Records Red Bull. Uh, to yes. do this track, and it's um, a, it, yeah. it's a cool track, and we spend a lot of time <laughs> trying to um, get it to where it is now. I heard that you all work with Brian Maloof as well. Yes, so he's the he's the one who mixed and mastered the track. The track was arranged by Pasan Lienage. Mm -hmm. We work with him a lot, but it's it was mixed and mastered by Brian Maloof, who. Who has worked with Michael Jackson, uh, Queen, Queen, Madonna, yeah. and a lot of artists like that. So mm -hmm. that's a really cool thing that we yeah. we never thought we could do that as well. <laughs> yeah. I remember one cool point, you know. Uh, so Johan insisted that there has to be something Sinhalese in the track. Like we, we sent multiple tracks to uh, them uh, to pick from. Uh, they liked a particular track, but then Johani was like, no, 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 give me a week. I'm going to give you a fresh track. Yeah. And she sent two versions of this track, and mm -hmm. then Brian and the team was like, "Okay, we like both. What do we pick?" And then again, Johanny goes, "No, no, wait. I, I like this particular <laughs> one, but I wanted to add a single his rap to it." Right? Yeah, and that's why I think that's why it took a little bit of time as well, because mm -hmm. I was uh, changing my mind a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll have to hold that thought for a sec. We'll go into a break, but as soon as we come back, shall we just uh, go out for a cup co coffee? Yeah, sure. All right, great. We'll be back soon. You're watching Gen XYZ. Welcome back and we came outside to get some fresh air and we are in discussion with Yohani and Dilanjan. I think before we left off, uh, we were speaking about your new release. Yep. Mm -hmm. Tell us all about it. About what was your inspiration uh, behind this story? Okay, so the name of this track is Moving On and it's about a breakup. Thank you. Thank you. And our coffee is here. Dilanjan, you've been waiting for your shots. <laughs> Thank you. It's about a breakup. He wrote it. I'm not too sure what uh, <laughs> went inside his head. So, Dilanjan, <laughs> would you like to add on to that? What, what was your inspiration? It was based off of what Yohani has been going through at that time. Yeah, I think right? we, we, what we were saying was uh, that it's a song, it, even if it is about a breakup, mm -hmm. it's about moving on from any negative thing in life. Yes. So, uh, so basically, the idea was how do we, because, you know, Yohani, uh, the love of her life is music. <laughs> and at that time, uh, there were some certain hard breaks within the music for her, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. certain legal matters. And uh, she was moving on from that. And how do we, you know, stop to tell that story uh, was the idea, but it ended up becoming a. Because ultimately, we end up we are naturally towards love and, you know, that's that's what we feel largely so I and think, uh, something okay. everyone could relate to so we were like okay let's go with it <laughs> okay great i think yeah most of us here in sri lanka could relate to that <laughs> <laughs> and um, talking about these international contracts how does it feel for you to represent our country uh it it's a uh, it's way too much pressure <laughs> okay <laughs> but i think that part is handled by uh, dilanjan and his team uh um I'm just the artist. I, I do the singing part of it. <laughs> okay. The legal side, I don't really get into because uh, we have the team here, Pet Effect and Thibra. Because um, otherwise, I'm going to be spending more time on that side of mm -hmm. things rather than doing music. <laughs> That's true. No, but how do you feel about it representing your country at this moment? If you get an offer from somewhere else or a chance to go abroad again, mm -hmm. would you take it? I would take it, mm -hmm. but uh, not to stay there, mm -hmm. stay somewhere, because I think I would always come back. Mm -hmm. If you take my history, <laughs> I've, I've lived in Australia, England, but I've always come back here because I feel better here. <laughs> okay. I think, Dilanjan, there's a lot that 
the youth right now can learn from you i mean there are people who would like to get into this industry also what advice or what are the platforms you think that are available that you know children or youth can follow in order to showcase their talents the advice the, the biggest advice i can give them is uh, nothing's going to happen overnight or in a year so you'll have to commit and dedicate your time learn um and improve yourself grow yourself within it so that is need that is you yes, have to stay in the course for a long time platform wise it is it, there are so many platforms like there is youtube now you can self distribute to spotify apple all of those music you don't need a label these days so you can do it on your own but the the challenge of doing it on your own versus a collaborative effort of a team is that you know you'll have to self manage yourself you know do the distribution yourself there's so many things you need to do right so the other advice would be you know team up with even you know bunch of friends who share a vision to do something you guys love doing um do you think it's easy to do this kind of things here in sri lanka because i feel that they are being restricted a lot from reaching out nothing's easy mm-hmm. uh but nothing's impossible as well right uh, the thing is figuring out the process is the difficult part example if you were to join a corporate and do a corporate job there is a process that has been tested out before you right yes. you start as an executive junior executive you know climb up the corporate ladder but in music what she did may not work for the other female artist who comes along so it's it's always uh experimenting yeah, what works for you yeah a lot of experimentation yeah mm-hmm. what can you say about patience how long did you take to come to this place right now mm. well we we start i started in 2016 mm-hmm. when we first spoke about uh, um opening or creating my youtube account so if you take 2016 for for years for years six oh six years sorry <laughs> So it's a process of a uh, work of 6 years I would say. Okay now you've released your new single and what can you tell our audience like what can they expect you from you further do you have any other plans in mind? Yes we do. Uh am I I'm working on a Sinhalese album. Mm-hmm. Uh it's going to have 12 songs. One song is out already called it in adare. So there's 11 more to come. Uh, it's going to be released next year July. So that's what we are planning to do. Well, how <laughs> okay, how would you encourage another individual who's entering into this industry? Or do you think like if they get another international contract should they accept or should they be representing Sri Lanka? I mean, it, it depends on your vision mm-hmm. for yourself. I think first one would have to figure out that <laughs> what they want to do whether they want to be in sri lanka or goa mm-hmm. that's up to an individual uh but if it's if it's aligned with the goals of course just take it <laughs> and i would say as an advice just what i always say just try everything learn whatever you can uh, that's relevant to your industry and just keep trying even if you fail just keep trying <laughs> all right and something that a very common problem that the youth is facing right now is the generational curse as they call it or the parents restrictions or the parents mindset they are restricting the children to you know just do the norm the norm is what become a lawyer become a teacher mm. become a doctor but um, do do you think that there is a way that we can change this mm. or anything that the youth or the child could do in order to get away from this norm Uh yeah. For me also it took some time to change because I I like I said I wasn't uh, taught to become an artist. Yes. Uh and taught to become a performer. I, we didn't do that. And also music was an ex- extracurricular activity mm-hmm. in school. So <laughs> that's probably why I never thought I'd want to be a mu- musician in the future at that time. Uh If someone's watching this and they want to become a musician or an artist or I don't know a poet or whatever <laughs> that side of things I think if you really believe in yourself just do it 
of course you're gonna fail <laughs> that's a given but then if you keep at it keep trying keep having a clear vision I think you might be able to get somewhere <laughs> what were some of the challenges that you faced at the mm -hmm. beginning with your family or relatives or society when you started changing tracks yeah well uh, they were like what what are you doing <laughs> of course First of all, when I told my parents uh, I'm, that I'm going to come back to Sri Lanka they're like wait a minute just think about it twice yeah. I was like, yes, I think thought about it for six months, <laughs> uh, which is fair enough from their, their side for them to be like, what are you doing? Because, I mean, they invested so much on us and then we are suddenly changing parts. Obviously, they're going to be like, what are you doing? Uh, but I think at that time, I just wanted to really try it out. And uh, I told my parents, give me like two years. I knew, I, I, I thought it was going to take more than two years. I knew it. I was like, in my head, I was like maybe like seven, eight years. Mm -hmm. But then just for my parents, I was like, give me two years. <laughs> so it did take more than that time? Yeah, more than that. Yeah. And they were completely fine with it? Yeah. I mean, after a while, they were like, you know what, we support you. <laughs> I mean, that's great to hear. Yeah. But unfortunately, not everyone is like no, this. No, uh, yeah. And but I think even if your parents are against something mm. that but you love doing something mm -hmm. this is probably bad advice <laughs> but you should just go do it <laughs> i have a very controversial answer to that type i, I yeah, advise all my ahead. artists with this as well um you can okay let's say for example right i tell my mother right, i'm gonna do something crazy mm -hmm. right, and she of course she's gonna be disappointed but can she unsun me <laughs> That's <I'm> true. Son, me. <laughs> so, I will always be her son. I will be always be my dad's son, right? So I can always go m make it up with them. Mm -hmm. So, so then the, the, the difficult thing is, yes, they are going to be disappointed for a smaller period of time. <laughs> They'll come around. I'm going to use them. <laughs> but <laughs> but what if that doesn't answer. come around? Parents always do. Are you sure? Because I, I mean, even if they don't, you just have to do what you like. I think that's. I mean, I would, I would think generally ninety nine percent of the people. I'm, I'm sure there must be uh, like <laughs> one percent that are yes. really, really difficult parents. But I believe parents usually would find it in their hearts to welcome their children back into, uh, even if their children the worst in the world, the mother and the father will. <laughs> always welcome them so this is nothing criminal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's something you love doing and they'll come around okay so what do you think about the recognition of talent and the entertainment industry in Sri Lanka right now do you think that they are giving the prominence to this industry or recognizing with value uh, no definitely not here because entertainment is uh, last time I checked is a 30 billion rupee industry Mm -hmm. uh, but during the COVID time, the entertaining in entertainers or other whoever in the industry wasn't even considered as um, uh, profession professionals to be allowed that loan which was given, right? Mm -hmm. The government. So definitely, there there are shortcomings or other. There definitely there are uh, things to be fixed. But I think the senior artists have taken, you know, uh, it to their hands and they're they're fixing it. So they're contributing back into the society so I think with, with time as uh, Sri Lanka is a developing country so I think things will fall in line like you can't expect things to change overnight or you cannot expect governments to do things for every industry yeah so. but do you think that there has been a change like throughout of course, the past absolutely. few years of course I, I, my opinion is that if you go back 10 15 years mm -hmm. what we do now would have been nearly impossible yeah. to do. Like when BNS came to the scene, changing the industry, that was much, much more harder than mm -hmm. what it is for us. So it, it has evolved a lot and we have access to like it's any... It's more saturated now. Exactly. But then yeah. uh, more access to resources yeah. and mm -hmm. platforms. Yeah. So would you say that it's easier to work in an international market rather than a local market in the entertainment industry? <laughs> It has its own challenges in every market, right? Yeah. So, depends on... The uh, thing is, internationally, if you look at uh, countries like Hollywood and Bollywood, we've, we've had the pleasure and honor of working in both. It operates too different. Like, India operates completely different to how Hollywood mm -hmm. operates, right? But um, it, it has its own way of working and own people, talent, 
within the industry so do we mm-hmm. the thing is if you look at it from an outside point of view you always think okay this is not a profession it's not there but hey come on we have some of the best sound engineers in the world yeah. some of the best musicians in the world uh, i know a guy who does course for avengers in sri lanka yeah okay right so there is talent of course there is talent it's my problem my issue right here is that our country is not given uh, prominence to that talent right now so if someone wants to get into this industry do you think it's necessary for them to reach out to an international contract or something of that sort uh well money is in international <laughs> market commercial right. value is there mm-hmm. and the appreciation for music is also in, in la bigger in those markets yeah. simply because the population and the penetration is bigger mm-hmm. uh, example here we can do a show for 3000 people maybe at two three venues and if you take it outside colombo you can't sh- sell a concert for big audience like yeah. and and the That's affordability true. of a ticket you know those those economic problems are there so then uh, how do we uh, make use of this economy is a yes a question so definitely international audiences will contribute largely well unfortunately i think we are reaching the end of our time limit on this <laughs> show but before that one request yeah. would you like to sing a piece or a part of your new single of for course. us moving on it is <laughs> and you brought the guitar i did <laughs> All right. Made it through and making hard remains of you remains on you every time i find my way to live to find another day every turn on the freeway i remember you always haunts me for one mistake for the remain saying I'm moving on, on. It's been too long, on. And now I know, oh, to find my way, I'm leaving you. Thank you. Wow, <laughs> amazing, amazing, and thank, thank you. you. It was my pleasure to having you on thank the you show. Thank you so much. Vilanjan again thank you very much for joining our show and please please don't go pranking people you did a really horrible <laughs> joke to me in the morning and i fell for it yeah we we said we uh, he said that the interview was tomorrow uh, she was like no it's today i know he gave me the shock of my life well thank you for that thank you for having us <laughs> Well, again, thank you so I much. hope we could meet soon. Sure. Thank you for inviting both of us here. All right. And thank that you. was the show on Gen XYZ this week. We'll see you hopefully again next week with another show or another topic relating the youth. I'm Suzanne Shanali. Stay safe and have a good night.